All right, in this video I'm talking about budget constraints and specifically when they shift, when they rotate, and when they kink. Um, and I'm gonna do this the same way I always do. When you see an equation, the first thing to do is orient toward the equation, by, or inequality in this case, by, um, by labeling the different parts very clearly, and when applicable, add numbers as examples in your head that you can use to think through how the how these things work. All right, so I just made up um, two goods that I'm interested in, books and chocolate. And so our budget constraint has the price of books times the quantity of books that we buy, plus the price of chocolate times the quantity of chocolate that we buy. And this is going to give us our total spending, and that needs to be less than or equal to the amount of money we have. And um, it's always helpful to choose some examples of prices and amounts of money just to help us sort through things. I always choose $100 for the money because that's easy to think about and we can have different prices that are easily divisible through that. So $100 for money is going to be the hypothetical example that I use. And if you're stuck on an exam, come up with hypothetical numbers. It really gets you unstuck. For price of books, we're going to start out with um, $20 and $2 for our chocolate bars. So let's draw this as a budget constraint. And we're asking the question when we construct our budget constraint, how much can we afford? And we usually start out with the two axes. What if we spent all of our money on books? What if we spent all of our money on chocolate bars? And so we look at our specific examples. Um, if we spent all of our money on books with $100 at $20 per book, we can buy five books. And we got that by dividing the $100 we have by the price of a book, $20, which is also equal to M divided by the price of books is P1 in our case. So that's going to be our intercept. And we're going to do the same thing with um, bars of chocolate. So how many bars of chocolate can we buy if we spend all of our money on chocolate? We have $100, chocolate bars cost $2, so we're going to be able to buy 50 bars of chocolate. And we got that by dividing the amount of money we have, $100, by the price of books, which is $2. And if we want to translate that into variables, that's going to be M divided by P2. Those are our intercepts. We know that the budget constraint is linear. Um, I talked about that in another video. So here we're really trying to figure out, does it shift or rotate? So to first, to start out with, let's imagine that you're, you have an exam and it's just asking, um, when does the budget constraint shift and when does it rotate? And you know there's kind of uh, only really two options here. One is the amount of money you have can change and the other is, one of the prices can change. And of course, that's a very basic question, but if we can answer that question and think about that one properly, um, it will help us to think about questions that are more complex when we may have a kink in the budget constraint. So, um, when does it shift? Oh, how much can we afford? I meant to write, we can afford. So the, those are just three bundles that we can afford. Okay, back to what I was talking about before. We wanna know when does it shift and when does it rotate? So we might ask ourselves, one of them is going to be in response to a change in M, the other will be in response to a change in the price of one of the goods. So um, let's just see when the price of a good changes, how does that change the budget constraint? Let's say the price of books goes down that's P1, it goes down from $10, $20 to $10. Now suddenly, instead of affording five books, we can afford twice as many, we can afford 10 books. Um, so we know that's a point on the new budget constraint, but the price of chocolate bars has not changed. It's still at $2, so we can still only afford 50. So our intercept here has not changed, our intercept here has. So that tells us that a decrease in the price of good one is going to rotate the budget constraint out as shown. And that probably hints that the other option, when we uh, increase or decrease M, that's probably going to shift our budget constraint. But we can also think about that by just hypothetically saying, okay, um, 
let's say we increased the amount of money we have to $200, we increased M, um, let's just look at the number of books we can afford, well previously, let's, let's start with this budget constraint, we've got a $10 price in books, we can now afford 20 books, so we're just doing this using very simple numbers and it's helping us sort through this. And we used to be able to afford 50 bars of chocolate. So now with $200, we can afford 100 bars of chocolate. And so um, when we draw that, um, if, we've, if we've drawn things properly to scale, which I have not, um, that should lead to a shift out in the budget constraint. All right, to think about kinking, we are back to our normal scenario, our, our original scenario, where we're using the $100 amount of money we've got, the price of books at 20, and the price of chocolate bars at $2. But the bookstore has this offer where the first three books you buy um, are sold at 50% uh, off. So, um, in which case, the price per book of those first three books is essentially 20 so it's not crossing out the old price because after three books we still have to pay the the full $20 price but um, the first three have a price of $10 so now we want to think about how does that change the budget constraint well um, we we've already done the budget constraint if if every single book was $10 we, we remember that um, in that case, we had an intercept over at 10 books, and I'm going to make this a dotted line budget constraint. And our intercept for chocolate bars was still at 50. So this was the case when all, all of our books were purchasable at 10. Now, if we look at um, three books, so we, we might want to mark three. So we have three books here. And we might want to label that, make that clear on the graph. Well, for the first three books, we are going to experience a budget constraint as if, um, as if it were the budget constraint we constructed when all books were ten dollars a piece. So for the first three books, this will actually be our budget constraint. Now, after that, um, we're going to have a different slope because we know we can't reach 10 books because we're going to have to pay a higher price for books for the, every book after three. Um, however, when we think about the ratio between books, the, the price ratio, the five books and three books, um, after our three books, it's still the ratio of 20 to 2. So our slope for our curve, our opportunity cost, is going to be the same as with our original budget constraint, meaning it's going to be parallel. Um, and, and we can figure out how many books can we afford if we only buy books. Well, we're going to buy the first three books for $10 each, so we've spent $30 on books. We have $70 left to spend on books, and those are $20 each, so we can buy, well, it's going, with, with $70 we can buy basically um, three and a half books at twenty dollars so uh, at six and a half books is where this new budget constraint the kinked budget constraint is going to um, cross that axis now how do you know if there's probably going to be a kink it's basically if the price ratios between goods ever changes so if there's a sudden change in the price of one, one good, that's going to lead to a kink. Um, and that's the main scenario. That, that price change can take various forms. It can be done through taxes. It can be done through sales where the first few products are a certain price. Um, but if you have a sudden change in the price ratio um, after any number of goods, that's going to indicate there's probably a kink. And when you have a kink, oftentimes you have parallel lines, you have the kink where um, part of the curve is represented as if you had a different budget, const budget constraint using different prices. So that's, that's generally how you think about rotating and shifting budget constraints.